Secretary, his name is Thomas uh, Hall, state rep, just uh, elected uh, in the last election. Um, he comes from Madison Township. I've known Tom uh, for about 10 years now. He was very active in uh, Middletown Rotary youth programs. He was the president of uh, Middletown High School. Uh, I believe the Middletown High School Rotary Club and president of the Miami University Middletown uh, Rotary Club. So he knows the ins and outs of uh, Rotary and uh, he's agreed to be our guest speaker today. So Tom, anything else you want uh, to tell everybody? Hey, that's perfect. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for uh, allowing me to come and speak today. I'm going to share my screen and I, 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 we put together a little presentation. Um, please let me know if this works or not. If it doesn't, I can just uh, go off the slides. Um, let's see here. Oh. Yeah, that, that works. That works, right. Tom. Okay, perfect. Let's see here. So, let's start. All right, so do you guys see my screen? Uh, it should say Ohio House of Representatives. Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. So, we'll start with, uh, you know, a little who's who. Uh, who is Thomas? Who is Representative Thomas Hall? Uh, I was born and raised in, in Madison Township. Uh, which is about 25 minutes uh, from the city of Oxford. Uh, the reason I know that is I used to make that drive to Miami University almost uh, every week uh, when I attended Miami University. Uh, I come from a family of public service. Uh, my father is our fire chief here in Madison Township. Uh, he's also a retired uh, law enforcement officer for Butler County Sheriff's Office. Uh, my mother runs on the uh, Madison Life Squad and is active in um, real estate in, in the area. Um, my history of Rotary, and I, I appreciate uh, Mr. McNeil uh, talking about some of the things that we've worked on together. Um, you know, I, I got involved with Rotary in Middletown. Uh, they have a great group of uh, Rotarians there. And I got involved at a really young age and I was actually at Miami University Middletown whenever uh, we started the Rotaract Club uh, there at Miami University Middletown. So one of the branch campuses of Miami University. And, um, you know, I can, cannot say enough great things about the leadership of the Middletown Rotary Club and the, the things they allowed us to do <clears throat> and continue to do at, at Miami University Middletown. Uh, I did graduate from Miami University uh, in um, December of 2018. Um, while I was in school at Miami University, uh, I, I commuted. I, uh, did not live at Miami Oxford. I, I commuted, uh, tried to uh, cut down on, on the cost as much as possible. Uh, with doing that, I was able to graduate college uh, debt-free. Uh, I, I worked uh, at the university through college and I worked at a small business in Middletown. Uh, after graduating from um, Miami University, I worked at a business called LexisNexis, which is just south of uh, the city of Dayton. I uh, worked there uh, for two years. Uh, during my time at, at Miami, there was an opening of uh, a uh, township trustee seat in Madison Township. And uh, I had reached out to a few people in the community, uh, the community I was born and raised in. And a lot of people, um, you know, were encouraged to see a young face uh, wanting to, to be involved in the political side of things of our township. Um, you know, everybody always asks me, you know, what, what made you want to run? Well, you know, two things. Uh, number one, uh, one person did tell me that I couldn't do it. And that was kind of the start of, uh, of, of the campaign. And then the other reason was I saw a need in our community to have a younger uh, voice and a younger face on, on our board uh, to bring different ideas to our township, to advance our township, to make it a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, fast forward to, to now, um, you know, we are uh, the youngest legislator in Ohio's General Assembly. Uh, we are only 25 years old. I, I get that question a lot as well as how old are you? Uh, 25 years old, and uh, we are one quarter of the way into our first term uh, here in the General Assembly. 
Um, and then I kind of wanted to talk about our committee assignments. Uh, the reason I want to talk about our committee assignments is I feel as though the committees that we were placed on, uh, which is done by the speaker and his team, are, are four really good committees uh, that, that reflect this district in a lot of ways. Uh, the first committee I want to talk about is we are the vice chair of technology and innovation. Uh, not every member gets to be a vice chair or a chair of committee, so I, I felt like that was a a really good thing that the speaker entrusted us uh, with, uh, with a vice chair uh, being in our first term. Uh, the other committee we are on is higher education and career readiness, uh, which deals directly with uh, Miami University, uh, Butler Tech, uh, which are both you know, located in and around the district. Um, then we, we are on infrastructure and rural development. A lot of great things happening uh, across Ohio when it comes to infrastructure and just making sure that we have a voice at the table uh, for our district. Um, and then the last committee is transportation and public safety. Uh, this is a committee that, uh, you know, we get a lot of road naming uh, legislation that, that, that passes through, uh, but we also get a lot of important legislation uh, when it comes to the state of Ohio. So very excited about our committee assignments, and uh, that's just a little bit about me. So what have we been up to in this first quarter of 2021? Uh, 2021 has, has been an experience, to say the least, uh, with, with the COVID-19 pandemic um, still you know, around and, and still precautions being taken to uh, make sure that we're doing our part uh, to minimize the spread of it. Uh, three big pieces of legislation I, I, I included in this presentation. Uh, number one was House Bill 2. Uh, Ohio Residential Broadband Expansion Grant Program. Um, Ohio doesn't have a lot of internet and COVID exposed that in a lot of ways. Uh, we saw a lot of families, we saw a lot of people working, uh, translate uh, to, or you know, not translate, but move to a home base instead of going to the office or going to the school. Um, so COVID in a lot of ways showed us what Ohio was good at and what a lot of ways what Ohio was not good at. Um, with this grant program, the idea is to get internet access to parts of Ohio that have little to no internet. Um, if you look at our district specifically, um, you know, the city of Oxford has internet, of course. Uh, the city of Middletown has internet, of course. Uh, but when you really think about some of the, the rural townships in our district, it's a struggle to find internet access, and, and that's a huge problem. Uh, for Ohioans all, all across uh, the state, and Ohio is even in our district. Uh, we just passed uh, House Bill 74. That's the transportation budget. Um, we sent it over to the Senate. The Senate sent back their changes. Uh, we concurred with the Senate on their changes, and it was sent to the governor's desk. Uh, and then the last one, which has gotten probably the most attention, and, and, and if uh, there's any questions or anything like that, uh, on these issues, uh, please, you know, either wait till the end or you're more than welcome to ask now. But Senate Bill 22, uh, it was to establish legislative oversight over the governor's uh, health orders, uh, something that, you know, the legislature has been really passionate about uh, through the course of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of back and forth on Senate Bill 22 because the governor did um, veto it, and then we we came back, and the legislature um, overrid his veto. So, uh, very uh, very telling times as at the state house. Um, you know, a lot of important legislation going through, and then I did want to circle back on what bills we are working on. So, there are hundreds of bills that are already introduced, and. With that being said, we have our name on uh, a, you know, a fair share. And a fair share to me is, is you know, more, than, more than three because a lot of people up there have multiple bills. Um, they're all in different parts of the process. So I'll start with our first bill. And if, and if you guys would like me to go in depth on, on more than just what we're talking about on, on the slides uh, with each bill or have a question, you know, feel free to, to let us know and we'll be happy for you. So... House Bill 99 is our first one. Um, it regards persons authorized to go armed within a school safety zone. Uh, it deals a lot with the um, with the uh, Madison school shooting 
Yes. Uh, the teacher's being I'm off. okay. How are you? Wonderful. Well, I'll come over early in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, House Bill 144 uh, is to authorize the county to implement a motor, motor uh, fuel quali quality testing. Uh, this is dealing with the bad gas that we've seen uh, in our area. Um, Ohio is only one of three states that currently does not test fuel quality. They test fuel quantity, but they don't test fuel quality. Um, so this is, uh, this is an issue that has br been brought to my attention. It's an issue that people have been working on for the last few years. Um, House Bill 176 is to revise the athletic training law. Uh, this training law uh, is crazy to me because it has not been updated since 1991. Uh, and the athletic trainers that we have in today's uh, environment uh, get far more training and they get far more education in today's uh, world. And we're just trying to update and modernize that practice act to allow them to do what they're trained to do uh, in the classroom. Uh, House Bill 225 and House Bill 230 are two of our newer uh, pieces of legislation. Uh, House Bill 225 is the grant tax credits to volunteer peace officers, firefighters, and EMS. Uh, in our district specifically, we, we do have some townships that, that do still have volunteer firemen or volunteer police officers and EMS. Um, what this does is it establishes, um, you know, based on how many years a um, subject or a man or woman has served uh, in their community, it gives them a tax credit based on the number of years of service. Now, I believe 11 plus years of service, you get up to a $2,000 tax credit. Six to 10 years of service is a $1,000 tax credit. And five years and under is a $500 tax credit. Uh, why is this a big deal? Uh, as you guys are, are well aware, uh, volunteerism is something of the past. And with, with volunteers becoming you know, more and more important in our communities, we're trying to incentivize and find ways to keep volunteers uh, running on local departments. Uh, I know that the world we live in now, everybody is busy. Everybody has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that we're keeping our local uh, governments, keeping their, their personnel and keeping uh, staff for their uh, emergencies that they get called out on. Uh, House Bill 230 is a unique bill. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, feedback on House Bill 230. House Bill 230 regards Ohio's information technology systems and their shared services. Um, as vice chair of uh, innovation and technology, one of the big things that we're trying to do is modernize our Ohio government uh, to make it more efficient and to hopefully save taxpayer money uh, on the back end of things. Um, this is this uh, House Bill 230 and House Bill 144 and House Bill 176 are all, uh, you know, bipartisan bills. Um, and, and I want to touch on that here in a minute on why that's important. But House Bill 230, uh, with regards to the technology in Ohio, there are some systems in Ohio that have been in place since um, 1997. And there's some things in Ohio that you can still, that you still can't do online. Uh, we saw with COVID the, the push for, you know, more online uh, access for people. So we, we are trying to listen to our constituents. We're trying to listen to people all across the state and trying to make Ohio a better place and more inviting to businesses uh, to come here and to bring uh, their, not only their businesses, but their jobs here and to, um, you know, contribute to Ohio's economy. Uh, HCR 5 is a House concurrent resolution. Uh, it's in response to HR1 in Congress. It's the federal takeover of elections. Uh, we have worked side by side with our Secretary of State, Frank LaRose, uh, on this one. Um, HR1, it has already passed the House in um, Congress. It has not passed the Senate yet. Uh, what we're trying to do is pass this resolution to send a message to our um, delegation from Ohio that we think that Ohio does elections the right way and that we are not for the federal takeover of elections. Um, a few of other bills or we are uh, in the works, but we have not put a bill number two or introduced. Uh, we're going to be working on the, the OTA omnibus bill. What is that? That's the Ohio Township Association. It's their omnibus bill they do uh, every General Assembly where they um, take 
the um, townships and the feedback from the townships and they put everything together in a bill to update the revised code and they do that from uh, year to year. Uh, and then if there's any ideas uh, from this group as well, we would love to, to hear ideas on that. Um, I, I, I wanted to circle back to the, the bipartisan part of, of some of my, my bills that we're, we're working on. Um, you know, you turn on the TV and you see a lot of uh, bipartisan, or you, excuse me, you see a lot of partisan politics. You see a lot of people uh, going back and forth on issues. At the Ohio House, things are a lot different. And I've, I've, I've learned that that's a, that's a huge uh, thing for me personally to be able to step in and to work with people from the other side of the aisle, uh, to work with people that not necessarily agree with everything uh, that, that we put forth, but it's been a great um, you know, learning experience working with members from uh, the Democrat side and uh, you know, co-sponsoring bills with them, joint sponsoring bills with them, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that, you know, at the Ohio House, a lot of things that we do are, uh, you know, bipartisan, where we all vote uh, together on, on things. There are some issues, obviously, that, you know, we're not always going to agree on, we're not always going to vote on. And, um, you know, I, I just can't say enough about, can't say enough good things about how, um, you know, our Democrat colleagues and Republican colleagues have been working together on a lot of good legislation uh, for the state of Ohio. So, um, you know, do not believe everything you see on TV uh, when it comes to the, the state because there's a lot of bipartisan effort and uh, very, uh, very happy to see that. So what's upcoming? Uh, you know, right now we are on, it's called a, a spring recess right now. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff back in the district. Uh, this is some of the things that, some of the bigger things that are, that are coming up uh, besides our, our piece of the legislation. Uh, House Bill 110 is our main operating budget. Uh, I had a call this morning about some of the amendments um, that are, are put in. Uh, the operating budget and the transportation budget have, have taken a lot of our time here in the first few months besides the legislation and committee work we've done. Uh, so we're working through the operating budget uh, as we speak. Um, redistricting. Uh, I get a lot of questions about redistricting. Why is this a, an important issue? Well, redistricting happens every 10 years, as you guys are well aware. And this year, it's a little different due to COVID. Um, we still have yet to get the census data back. So we are unsure when we will get to, um, you know, see the new lines, because there's going to be new lines drawn, uh, as they do every 10 years. So we are awaiting, and, th and this has big implications for the federal uh, congressional uh, races and the state house races as well. Uh, so we are all kind of waiting at this time uh, for an answer on the, on the census data. Uh, obviously, there's a committee that's going to be um, making the, the decisions for the redistricting lines. Um, so we will keep you guys posted as, as we get information on, on that as well. Uh, one of the thing, one of the fallouts from this, from not getting the data yet, is the um, primary is supposed to be next May. Uh, that actually might get moved to June if we don't get the data back in time. So just something to to keep in the back of our mind. Uh, and then we put on here uh, returning to the normal way of life in Ohio. Um, you know, we've heard, we've met with, we've heard a lot from the business community. Uh, we are all still trying to, to take all the precautions necessary to, to get out of this pandemic together. Um, but it's, it's a unique time, as I, as I stated earlier, to be in politics, to see this firsthand and to work with businesses to um, reopen Ohio uh, safely and to uh, be respectful of everyone in the process. Uh, one of the most important things of our office that I feel like that we do is we try to be as active in our district as possible. Um, I don't, I, you know, if, if you're a Republican, great. If you're a Democrat, great. My big thing that I, I try to push to people is I want to hear from you. Uh, I want to hear if you think we're doing a good job. I want to hear if you think we're doing a bad job. And I, I want to learn more about, about what you think should be done at the Ohio House. Uh, I want to give you guys a voice. I obviously want to represent your guys' voice in Columbus 
but I want to make sure that I'm hearing directly from you guys uh, on a, a variety of issues. Um, so what we've done in this first quarter is we have done so much outreach with local uh, governments, local school boards, and even with this picture on this slide uh, with President Crawford at Miami University. Uh, we have tried to uh, make sure that we are hearing uh, from the district uh, and we are always, uh, you know, I always tell people we're always one phone call or one email away uh, from, you know, hearing from you as well. Uh, we hope to do a lot more town hall meetings and constituent outreach. Uh, we are still, you know, obviously, uh, again, trying to be respectful of, um, you know, the, the guidelines that have been set out uh, from the CDC and trying to just let this virus get the vaccines rolled out and try to get this virus to, to go away for good so we can finally start having meetings and, and constituent outreach uh, like, like door to door and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we do have our first newsletter coming out uh, in the next, uh, I would say in the next few weeks, we should, we should have our first newsletter out. Uh, we'll be happy to send that over to you guys that way you guys all have a copy of our newsletter. Uh, and then, as I touched on before, the door-to-door -door and hearing directly from you. Uh, that's a huge part of our uh, message is going door-to-door -door and, you know, meeting people at their doorstep, hearing uh, what they think of the job that we're doing and hearing, you know, what we can improve on or things they want to see uh, in Columbus. So I put a, a closing slide. Uh, that's my contact information uh, at the state, at the, in Columbus. Um, if you guys are ever in Columbus in the, in the fall or in the next few months, you know, please reach out to us. We'll be, we'll be happy to uh, show you around up, up there at our district office. And then obviously the state house is right across the street. Uh, really cool place to see if you haven't been there in, in a while. Uh, there's also my email. Uh, we are also on so social media. Uh, we have a Twitter at Rep Thomas Hall and then our Facebook page. Uh, is at Rep Hall 53 uh, or State Representative Thomas Hall. Um, and I, I put this on here because, again, we want to hear from you guys. We want to make sure that we are representing um, you in Columbus. Uh, if we disagree on something, I'll be happy to provide why I think, you know, differently than you. But I, I do want to hear why you, why you think the way you do because uh, as, as a um, constituent of this district, it's, it's so important to always hear uh, from the district and make sure that we are representing uh, the, the best that, that we can do in Columbus. Um, I also left out a lot of time. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take any questions. If it's a question that I, I'm not sure, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I'll, I'll, I will simply uh, just say, hey, I'll, I'll try to get some more information to you on it. Uh, so I, I look forward to any questions that you guys have from the group. And, and thank you again for allowing me to come and speak. Um, and I'd be happy to, uh, whenever you guys do meet in person again, I'd, I'd be happy to, to come to a meeting in person uh, to hopefully share a better update, uh, that we have some bills passed by that point, or to just see you guys in person as we, as we get out of this pandemic together. Hey, Tom. Yes. Hi, this is Susie Sadler. Um, I'm a question about the census, and and I'm I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact date, but I believe the fact that COVID um, had impacted Oxford uh, with the Miami students not being on on campus or in town, the date of the census um, is that is that being looked at? I'm you know it's not. Um, an issue solely for Oxford. I know a lot of small uh, college towns are facing this too, but I didn't know if that was being addressed or not. Yeah, so we have not, to be very up upfront with you, we have not had too much uh, converse conversations with the census uh, data uh, as far as the, the getting the data. Um, our conversations have been primarily focused around uh, when we are gonna get the data, and, 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 you know, making those decisions going forward. It's something that we can definitely uh, look into for you. Um, on this call with me is, is my aide, uh, Nick Morgan. He's, he's on the call as well. Um, so we will definitely look into that and, and see, because that's a very good point. And it, it doesn't just affect, you know, Miami University or our, or our district, but it affects, you know, the state of Ohio as well. So we will definitely uh, try to look into that for you.
Are there any other questions for Tom? I have one. This is Bob Biggs. Uh, Tom, first, uh, thank you for your service to our district and to our state. We really need good people stepping up and serving in your kind of capacity. Uh, you mentioned that there is bipartisanship at the state level here in Ohio, but yet there's partisanship at the federal level. Why do you think that is? You know, Bob, that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, and, and to be very honest with you, I was nervous the the first few weeks uh, going into it uh, because you know January six, uh, what happened at the Capitol, um, you know, really kind of put things into perspective on where we were as a country uh, at that time. Uh, so going into Columbus, we we went in with an open mind, um, and we met a lot of great people uh, that you know, represent districts that are a lot different than, than the ones we represent. And to answer your question um, directly, uh, I think a lot of, a lot of people's uh, egos play into that as, as well at, at the federal level. Um, I'm not sure why they can't get along because, you know, we, we do it, um, you know, almost every day at the state house in Columbus. Um, and the, the thing that, that frustrates me the most is, uh, when we go and we talk to people uh, in the district, some people won't talk to us because we are Republican. And some people won't talk to us because, you know, we, we, we did this or did that. You know, if you just, if someone disagrees with me, I want to know, I want to talk to them most. I want to understand, you know, why, why do you disagree with us? Why do you think that we should have done this differently? And I think a lot of that happens at the state, uh, at the state house. Uh, with the Democrats. And uh, I've met, I have probably three or four of my best friends from Columbus that are Democrat. And the, the bottom line of it is, and we have a mutual respect for each other, uh, you know, on the weekends, they go home to a different district than I do. And, you know, they, they represent their, their uh, constituents, just like I have a job to represent my constituents. Um, but personally, you know, I think it all gets back to having the conversations that nobody wants to have. And we've tried to do a lot of that with our Democrat colleagues up at the state house. We've tried to, uh, you know, go out to lunch with them or grab coffee with them. And you know, they're they're people just like just like we are. Everybody's people, and everybody, you know, is there for the right reasons. They want to represent their district to the best of their ability. And um, you know, I I wish there's a federal level it was different. Uh, I feel like it's gotten more partisan over the you know the last last few years and the last few months. Um, but I hope there's a day we get back to the table uh, together, uh, Republican, Democrat, uh, independent, um, you know, whatever you believe, mm. let's just get back to the table. And yeah, yeah, heat it up, yeah. Tom, well, this, is Jack, this is Jack Southard. A question about the, uh, the overriding of the governor's veto. Uh, would you help us understand what it is that it seemed, at least, at least from the, the majority in the House and, and the Senate, felt that that the uh, governor was doing uh, wrong. Because uh, I know many of us really have been watching and the, the governor and his uh, carry with the COVID uh, right along and would probably be, at least in, from my own view, pretty pleased with what he's been doing. How can us understand why the red the uh, uh, legislature has not seen, or what have they seen that they need to correct that's a problem? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question, Jack. And, and, and thank you for it. Um, so I guess the best way to start this is a lot of the frustration from the legislature came from last year. Um, when, when the COVID-19 pandemic began uh, in March of, of last year, um, you know, the governor, and, and if, if I speak about the governor and I say I disagree, it's always respectfully I disagree with him because he has a very tough job to do. And I, I think that nobody in this, in this state can say that he's got an easy job. He's got a very tough job with a lot of tough decisions to make. Um, what had happened is um, there was a lot of legislators that were getting a lot of pushback uh, from their districts. Um, the governor, in a lot of ways, worked with Dr. Acton at the time uh, to to set forth a lot of a lot of changes for the state of Ohio, and in doing that, the legislator felt like they were left out of the decisions. So, with that being said, 
all the constituents of these um, legislators that were reaching out saying, hey, you know, how can uh, DeWine shut down, go, excuse me, Governor DeWine shut down my business, but how can he keep Kroger's open? And it started back, back, I would say last fall is when the frustration really started to get because the legislators couldn't do anything. And that's, that was their problem. That was their issue with it. Uh, they established, I, I believe it was House Bill 313 from the last General Assembly uh, to try and rein in, in, in their terms, to rein in uh, some of the, the power the governor had in, in making these decisions unilaterally. Um, that did not go through. Um, we had looked at House Bill 90, uh, and then we, we concurred with uh, Senate Bill 22. So Senate Bill 22, it allows the governor to still do whatever he thinks is necessary. We do not take that power from the governor. The governor can still uh, declare you know, state emergency and, and still do things that he's been doing. The only thing that it changes now is that it allows for the legislators to have a voice at the table in the decision-making process. And that was the big change. Uh, and that's why I got so much news is because he did veto it. Um, and that's, that's where we stepped in. And we had, we had enough votes in the Senate and House to override the veto. Um, so again, the governor can still act the way he's done over the last year and, and do whatever he thinks is necessary for all Ohioans. But now the legislator can kind of step in, the legislature can kind of step in and say, hey, we don't agree with this. And if they get a, a, you know, a certain number of votes needed, then we can uh, terminate the health orders. Thank you. Anyone else? It's a, um, Jack, just to follow up, it's a, it's a very tough issue, uh, you know, both sides of it. Uh, I've, I've talked with our health commissioner here in Butler County. Uh, there was some worries with some of the language in the bill uh, that, that we are, we're still trying to work out. Um, and, you know, I, I'm more than willing to sit down. And I, I told uh, Commissioner uh, Jenny Baylor that on the phone. I said, I'd be more than willing to sit down with you. If there's any worries you guys have or any worries that the university has, you know, we'd be willing to work with them and sit down with them and figure out ways we can make it better. So the conversations are still being had, uh, but it, this is also new that uh, everybody's trying to, you know, make sure that they, that they understand what's, what's going on. So you would see maybe additional follow-up uh, legislation being developed uh, in, in the term now that you're, you're, the, you're there. Well, so, so Senate Bill 22 passed while I was there. Uh, House Bill 313 from the last General Assembly did not get anywhere. So we did pass Senate Bill 22. Uh, what I was saying is what we had heard in the last uh, week, or excuse me, the week before the vote uh, for the override, uh, while the governor had the, the bill and he, he didn't sign it, he vetoed it. Uh, we heard a lot from, you know, the university. We heard a lot from uh, county health commissioners, local health commissioners on, you know, some of the things they didn't like in the bill. So what I, what I told uh, Commissioner uh, Jenny Baylor and, and Miami University is, hey, I know there's some stuff in here. Uh, there's been some stuff brought up uh, in uh, the, the state house from other districts of some worries. So those will be ongoing conversations that if we see fit, uh, something can happen that I would love to work with them to, to make sure it gets addressed uh, to, to, to make sure it's, it's good for our district. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, well, uh, Tom, we, we thank you very much for the presentation and for your willingness to listen to everybody every time. And, uh, and that's great. And we will put a book in your name into Lane Public Library. That's what we always do for speakers. And certainly we would, we would love to have you back uh, at some time in the future. So um, everybody thumbs up or whatever for, for Tom's talk, it's really good. Well, thank you guys again for having us. And uh, you know, like I stated before, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, I don't know if, if I should have mentioned this earlier, but my, my mentor uh, was, is Tim Derrickson. I don't know if that's a name you guys know, but Tim yes. Derrickson has been extremely, oh, yeah. extremely helpful with me in, in my career um, at the State House. So 
uh, if, if anything is, if, I, if we're doing anything bad, let's blame Tim Derrickson. If we're doing anything mm -hmm. good, let's, let's, let's not. So, you, you know, 